day viewers it's another time of bible study and we are always grateful for the privilege we have to sit and learn at the feet of jesus today we continue our discussion on the divinity of christ remember last week we looked at his resurrection today we'll be looking at his ascension and I have with me in the studio uh, resource persons whom by the grace of God will help us look closely at this important topic. By my left is Mrs. Ijoma Ukejofo. She is the Vice President, Mothers Union Women's Guild, Gwarimpa Achidekenri, here in Abuja Diocese. You're welcome to the program, ma. Thank you. And then by my right is Mrs. Amaka Ogwejofo. A Bible study teacher, Basilica of Grace, Gudu, also here in Abuja Diocese. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Sir. You're welcome, viewers. Our aims today will be to teach about the ascension of Christ. To confirm Jesus Christ as the only one who died, resurrected, and ascended into heaven. We will confirm that from the scripture, of course. And then finally, to explain more on the purpose of his ascension. Why did Jesus have to ascend? Why did he ascend after his resurrection? That was something that happened 40 days after his resurrection. Why did he need to do that? So we'll be looking at all those as we study together. Like we normally do, I want to encourage you to invite people around you, your family, your loved ones, your neighbors. It's going to be an interesting time studying the Word of God. In our tradition, before we move into the discussion proper, I'd like to invite our resource persons to help us read the background text. Mrs. Ogwejofo, John chapter 3, verse 13. And then Mrs. Uh, Ukejofo, Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, 1 to 11. Quickly, let's build the discussion together from there. John chapter, th uh, John chapter 3 and verse 13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Mommy, okay, Jeffrey. Acts chapter 1 from verse 1 to 11. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that <laughs> Jesus began both to do and teach. Mm. Until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father had put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up and their cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into, into heaven. heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, to Thanks be to God. Our introduction. At the beginning of this treatise, St. Luke addressed Theophilus as most excellent. That we can see clearly in Luke 
chapter 1, verse 3. Theophilus might have been a Roman official who had already embraced the Christian faith or was even simply a Christian middle-class Roman citizen who gave Luke the opportunity to write a complete account of Jesus and the early church. However, Luke's account was to prove to the Roman government through this eminent Roman politician that the works of Jesus Christ and those of his disciples were never intended to be a threat to the Roman government. The record by St. Luke proves beyond any doubt the authenticity of Jesus Christ's ascension into heaven. Moreover, other biblical passages have similarly narrated the purpose of Christ's ascension into heaven. Just by way of summary, looking at the introduction, I'd just like to dwell briefly on the last line in that introduction that dwells more on the purpose of his ascension. And that I'm trusting the Holy Spirit will be etched so deeply in our spirit man this day as we move along in the Bible study. For us to get, take hold rather, of the purpose why he ascended. Because there are many things we are going to be seeing as we study closely. So that those things will be realized in our life. Jesus did not just go up to heaven for the form of it. There is a purpose. And I pray that that purpose will be realized in our lives as we walk the walk of faith in our time. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Study guide. Mamu Kejofor, I'd like to start off with you. From biblical and life experiences, mention someone apart from Jesus Christ who was one We'll be looking at four parameters now. Who was dead? Second, buried. Third, who resurrected? And then finally, ascended into heaven. To answer that, I'd like you to quickly help us re-echo that John 3, verse 13, where we took us one of our texts. John chapter 3, verse 13. Then we'll take your response, man. Thank you. John 3, verse 13. 13 says, No one has ascended to heaven. But he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. So, buried, resurrected, and ascended. Dead, buried, buried. resurrected, and ascended. And even from the scripture we read, uh, from biblical experience, uh, there is no such person except Jesus Christ. Yeah. And the question says, apart from Jesus Christ. And then from... Uh, although in the Old Testament we can think about somebody like Elijah and Enoch. In Genesis chapter 5 verse 24 we are told that Enoch was not. Was not. God, took him. God took him. And then Elijah in 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 11, Elijah was also taken by God. And uh, both of them did not die. They did not, uh, okay. they were not buried. And we were not told they, they got up from any kind of coma or anything. So it's only Jesus Christ exactly. that died and was buried and he resurrected and ascended into heaven. Awesome. So in, in essence, though Enoch and Elijah were taken up, they never met, first no. of all, they were not dead. They were not, they were not buried dead. physically. Yeah, we don't have any accounts that they were buried. So it's only Jesus Christ. Yes. Perhaps I was, I was preparing my heart for a root shock. <laughs> if anything <laughs> happened that we didn't know in, script, in, in front of the Bible. But, uh, mommy, you okay, for, mommy, or good for rather. Maybe in your own life experience now. Mm -hmm. Mommy has told us something from the scriptures. Your life experience. I have uh, neither heard <laughs> nor seen. Yeah. And indeed it is impossible mm. for anyone else apart from Jesus to have awesome. died, been buried, resurrected, and ascended into heaven. And I just want to say quickly that, you know, for many of us, the Easter season ends with the resurrection. Mm. It doesn't actually end with the resurrection. Mm, yeah. The ascension is a crucial part of of the of the is, story is, yeah because if the resurrected christ did not ascend then what where is christianity mm. christianity is based on these four things the death 
the resurrection, the burial, the resurrection, and, and the resurrection. ascension. You can't remove it. It's like a four-legged table. You can't yeah. remove any of it. Mm. And Christianity stands. Mm. Awesome. So, yes. Jesus is the only one. Who has done it. And it's awesome that he ascended, like Mommy Ogwejo for just highlighted. We're making progress. I'd like to stay with you still. Who is the only person who can ascend into heaven? Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4. You help us read that. And then Mommy Ogwejo for John 6, 33, verse 38 and verse 62. We won't take John 3, 13 again. We just read that. Let's establish from the scriptures who is that person alone that can ascend into heaven. Pro Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 4. Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his feasts? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? Mm. And what is his son's name, if you know? Awesome. Hallelujah. Then John, John 6, 6, 33. 33, 38 and 62. Mm. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven mm. and gives life to the world. 38, 38 and then 62. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, mm. but the will of him who sent me. Awesome. And 62. What then? If you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before. Yeah. So, who is the only person who can ascend into the heavens? Remember, part of the text we should have read here is also John 3, 13, that says no one. Mm -hmm. So, just put that in context as you respond to this question, man. Hallelujah. Amen. The question actually has a one word answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're not answering one word. Yeah. You know, when I look at the issue of the ascension of Jesus, it's something I personally find very fascinating. Because it takes the one who made the law of physics to suspend the law of, of physics. physics. It's divine. You know, we're talking about the divinity of the Christ. Yes. For you to ascend naturally, you need a vehicle. You're either going to be in a plane, a helicopter, a rocket, or whatever. Or a space shuttle. Or a space There is mm, no mm. way that a person can... But in the full view of his disciples... He didn't just disappear. In the full view of his disciples, his feet left the ground. And gently, because he didn't want them to say, he just, we don't know where yeah, he went. Yeah. Gently, he lifted into the clouds. And there were witnesses mm. to his going. Until the clouds took him out of their sight. If you look at Proverbs that, you know, where, where the, the, those questions were being asked, the answer of the question is plain. It even comes to a point where it says, what is his name and what is his son's name, if you know? Jesus is the son of God. Mm. He is divinity himself. Mm. And it is in that capacity that he ascended into heaven. It is the same one who came down from heaven miraculously and was born. Hmm. that we celebrate at Christmas, hmm. that also beat the law of gravity and took his earthly body. Hmm. They have searched for the body for centuries, for millennia, and hmm. they will never find it. Hmm. Because the day you find that ascended body, we know it ascended, but the day that the doubters find it, Christianity ends that day. Hmm. He took the body with him. That's an impossibility, I dare it's say. An impossibility. Hmm. He's the only one, the one who came down from heaven. He's the one that went back up into heaven. Awesome, and awesome. He, Mommy, I like to also, you know, I look at the poser mm -hmm. that the um, the Agor, that's the son of Jacke in that Proverbs chapter 30, the poser they threw at Job. The last line in that verse 4 say, if you know. <laughs> so I dare ask again, do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Thank you very much. Mm. It's only he whom God reveals himself to mm. would know. Jesus said, I am he that came down to do the will of my father. Awesome. I am he that came as bread. Mm. So he already was the one God prepared and he knew and he came and fulfilled the, the will of God. Awesome. So that's Jesus Christ. No one. And no. except the one Jesus reveals himself to, just like he promised that he will come again. And when he comes, he will take his own with him. So that is the only way to 
Awesome. You know, yes. Awesome. You know, mommy, when you talked about is only the one who made the law of physics that can suspend the law of physics. Yes, of course, sir. that's a given. Mm. And you know that even if you go out now and, and try to try it, anything that goes up, <laughs> surely that's gravity. Mu yeah, must that's come gravity. down. That's gravity. Yeah, that's gravity. Yeah. Of gravity. Who is he Newton now? Nah, nah, I'm trying to remember the man in physics, uh, Isaac Newton. You know, mm. the story was he was watching people things and then they were coming down. He decided to make an inquest. What is it that makes these things that go up to come down? And that's how that came about. But for the Son of Man, the Son of God, who became the Son of Man so that you and I will, and I will have life, mm. he beat that law beat gravity. completely. And like you say, they watched him lifted up. It was not an apparition. They mm. closed their eyes and opened it and they didn't see him again. They watched him meticulously so, he ascended. That tells us that this God is awesome. Without oxygen supply. So why? Yeah. So you know that when, is part of the law. Of mm, mm, without oxygen, <laughs> that in space you need oxygen. Awesome. <laughs> you know where my mind is even going to now is the issue of people who doubt how real would the rapture be mm. if it was possible for him who made this law mm. to suspend it in order to realize this. Some people say, Ah, how is it going to happen? What's your take on this, mm. man? Quickly. You see, the resurrection body that Jesus had was not the body that you and I have. Mm. This body has limitations. That one has no limitations. Awesome. And the Bible awesome. says, in an instant of time, we shall be changed. Mm. Changed into that body to enable us to beat gravity and live. Awesome. Hallelujah. Hey, and so will we ever be caught up with, a with the Lord yes. in the air? Child of God is awesome. It's awesome. And you know, since he has also said it, he will do it. Because, because he has the power to do it. He has been given the power to do it. To do it. Yes. This God is all powerful. It's been interesting. All this series looking at the power therein in this name, Jesus. I trust God that as you key in in faith, you know, we are talking of ascension, which beats all natural laws. But when you accept Jesus and make him the Lord of your life, you will live in a different realm. The things that happen to others will not happen to you. Even if the it comes your way. God will grant you grace to live above those things. Why? Because there is a victory that becomes your lot when you encounter Jesus. Child of God, God is real. Is he real to you? That's the big question. We'll be back in a moment to continue. God bless you. Why do we fall ill? Is it possible to stay without falling ill? Is God interested in our health? Can we get access to cheaper health anywhere? Do you want tips on how to stay healthy? Health Watch, a program to educate your viewers on how to take care of your bodies and deal with different health-related issues. Welcome back. Remember, we've been considering Jesus' ascension under the sub theme, the divinity of Christ. And God has helped us thus far. We've established the fact that no one ever did ascend apart from the one who came down from heaven, who is Jesus Christ. And so we want to continue again. Remember, I've been in the studio with our resource persons, Mrs. Amaka Ogwejofo and Mrs. Ijoma. Okay, Jeff. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the next question says, why did Jesus Christ ascend to heaven? I know when we are looking at the aims of this study, I stressed on that because for me, I want us to understand why did he have to ascend? Is there something for us as believers that we can draw, some gain, some premium we can draw from his ascension, the fact that he's in heaven today? What can we draw from it? And what's the promix that it has for us as Christians. So we want to look at that quickly. I would like to invite you, Mrs. Ukejo, to help us read Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Mommy Ogwejo for Ephesians 4, 8 and Colossians 2, 15. And I will take Hebrews and then we'll take your thoughts now. Okay. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, 
who also makes intercession for us. Thank you, ma. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 says, Therefore he says, When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. And also Colossians 2.15 2.15, uh, yeah, verse 15. Verse 15 says, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Thank you very much, ma. I'd like to read Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24 to 25. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Scripture. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. Maybe I would like to stretch it to verse 28. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, for salvation. So looking at all these background scriptures we've just read, we want to consider why did Jesus Christ ascend to heaven? You know, the destination is specific. He didn't just ascend to nowhere. He ascended to, to heaven. heaven. Yeah. So why did he have to do that? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When uh, Jesus ascended into heaven, there is a mission or there is something that he has gone there to do. Yes, ma'am. First, he ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God. And he's not just sitting there. He's there making intercessions for mm. us, pleading on our behalf for salvation of all of us so that none that he has already called to himself will be lost mm. so that's why he is the propitiation for our sins mm. and he there he's there pleading for mankind ma, ma, sorry I, I would like you to still hold your thoughts there because this is this is deep and this is heavy so for that man out there as we speak who is still living in sin Jesus is at the right hand for pleading him, for, his soul. for mercy, for that yes. soul to come back yes. to God. So for that woman out there, mm -hmm. who is still wallowing somewhere, maybe it's in, in modern day language, you say, I'm a slave queen, I'm just living mm -hmm. my life. Jesus is still waiting for her to yes. come back home. Yes, pleading. And mm. even for the saints that is already with Jesus, Jesus is pleading that this one will not... Uh, go backslide. Yes, ah, that awesome. this one not go the wrong way. Hmm. That this one will still be saved at the right time. So, um, if you look at it, God has done it that Jesus is there and awesome. pleading so that all of us who belong to Him and those who are still to come into the fold will be ransomed. Awesome. And awesome. He did that when He died. He died once and for all. Mm, that's you know, what Hebrews says it. captured it. Said it's not as though it's the blood of animals or blood of any other being, but his own, his mm. own blood. He was shed once for, for all. all. So it's not as though sacrifices will be made over and over again for the same atonement. No, it has been done and finished with, mm. and that has secured. Our salvation awesome and then Jesus also went there so that gifts will be given unto men yes ma'am or mankind the saints of Christ will be equipped for the body of Christ mm, for the work of ministry that's what you have in Ephesians chapter 4 he says some were given the gift of apostles some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the building of the church so that the church will not lack in any mm. of the materials they need or in anything they need for them to 
become the bride of Christ, awesome. to be ransomed of Christ. Mm. So Christ is there, having, in the presence of God, having offered his blood so that the Holy Spirit will be made available to man for the church of God to be built up to awesome. perfection. I, I'm taking that efficiency because I, wa I want our viewers to understand what... Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive yes. and gave gifts to, to men. men. Yes. Awesome. Yes. So all these five-fold ministerial gifts that you've just mentioned came as a consequence that he had ascended. He ascended. Awesome. And then captivity, whatever it is, what is it that will hold anybody captive? That is what Christ ha is now holding captive. Mm. Holding captivity captive. Mm. What, uh, what is it? that is it, is it weakness? Is it sin? Christ is holding it captive, captive already. So he has set us free so that we can live that life that he has already prepared for us. Manifesting these gifts. And, yes, and making these gifts work in our lives awesome. and in his church. This Praise is deep. the Lord. You know, mm. I don't want you to lose it. Can you picture in a moment the risen Lord pleading before the Father on your behalf? You need to make out the most of this precious gift of God. You have to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. I also want to add that Jesus ascended to heaven to complete a process. Yes, ma'am. A process that started at the cross. Mm. From his uh, crucifixion to his burial to his resurrection and to his ascension. The ascension capped the entire process. Without the ascension, the entire process was incomplete. He that's needed the, the to, grand come now, to the yeah. grand finale to mm. complete the issue of salvation, the issue of redemption. The ascension capped everything. It's like the icing on the cake. Mm, awesome. Mm. That's that's awesome. So it was not a halfway journey. No. It was it was a three to to yes. made it made way for the Holy Spirit to come to come, to come. the comforter, the you teacher. Know, mm, I think it's somewhere in John, John chapter 17, there about the way he promised his disciples. Yes. It is expedient for you that I, I go. go. Because if not, the whole comforter will what not come. come. So that ascension was a precursor to yes. the com comforter. Yes. It's like a signal to heaven. Send down everything that mankind needs for salvation and redemption. Hmm. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Awesome. That's why the church is functioning in that realm, the Pentecostal church in our time, because of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Ma, from today's study now, how important is Christ's ascension to you? That question is personal. I'd like you to start from the first person point before of view. Go. Before we now go on to other people. You know, because this is, this is, we need to appropriate these things to ourselves. That's what it means to practically walk in the realm of light. That's what God's word brings us to. So, how important is Christ's ascension to you? Please, let me start on a different plane now. <laughs> let me establish. Is it important to you? Yes, sir. It's important to me. So, let's get into the nitty-gritty now. How important is it to you? But I'd like us to back it up from, with these scriptural uh, references. John chapter 14, verse 2, and then verse 26 to 27, and <laughs> chapter 16, verse 7. You help us read, Mommy or Gwejo for. And then Mamu Kejo for First John two one. I will take Romans chapter eight thirty four again, and then we we'll take your submissions. Remember, you are starting from you, and then we we'll extend it to others. All right, sir. John chapter fourteen verses two to three. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. also. Awesome. Praise the Lord. And 26 to 27 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace, I leave with you. Okay, we are stopping uh, at, okay, up to 27. Peace, I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Then chapter 16 verse 7. 16 verse 7 says, 
Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Hallelujah. Mm. I think uh, that's the reference I made earlier. Yes, chapter sir. 16, mm. not 17. And then, First John 2, verse 1. First Help one. us read. Yeah, mm. Mommy Kejofo. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. I'll read Romans chapter 8, verse 34. We took it before, but I would like to take it again for purposes of emphasis. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Hallelujah. So, mommy, how important, you've told us that it's important to you. How important is Christ's ascension to you as a believer, personally? Hallelujah. Amen. Christ's Amen. In, uh, ascension is important to me personally as a believer because like we have been looking at it, it released a lot of benefits to me as a believer. If you look at the text that we looked at earlier mm. in uh, John 14 and verses 2 to 3, it mm. says, I go to prepare a, a place. place for you. You know, sometimes as we live our lives, it's as if Sometimes because of the difficulties and challenges of living, it's as if this earth is all there is to it. As if we are here to solve series of problems and then it ends here. You solve one, you jump you to another. You go to another one. But the joy of the Christian is that the same way that Christ ascended, that is how I also will ascend. Mm -hmm. It is a guarantee. Awesome. He is the firstborn from the dead. The first in all things, including oh, in ascending, beating gravity, and entering the heavenlies. Awesome. To be with the Father. He said, I oh, go Jesus. to prepare a place for you. And when that place is set, I will come and receive you to myself, so that where I am, there you will be. Do awesome. we talk about the issue of peace? You know, when we look at all the things that transpire around us on a daily basis, and then you look at a Christian, one who knows Christ, and then you see a peace that I call an unreasonable peace. Mm. Somebody is passing through all kinds of challenges, all kinds of difficulties that ordinarily speaking, they should sit in one corner and bemoan their lives and say, woe is me, I'm undone, I'm finished. But you see the person bubbling. Mm. They're bright, they're glowing, ah. they're happy, and they're not pretending. It's something that is welling up from their inner man. Mm. And he said, my peace, I live with you. I send you a helper. Look at my infirmities. Who else can help me? Oh, I ask myself that question. Which man, which woman can I go to and say, have you finished helping yourself? Ah, deep. You know, but he said, I will send you a, a helper ah. who will be with you. He's like my life coach. And he's, he's possibly like will be with you all the always. time. Always. He's like my standby generation generator. Mm. I plug in and there's power to live another day. Mm. There's power to survive for another day. Awesome. So I don't know. Do I leave it with myself? You or can. Is I, <laughs> I should extend it to all of us. Mm. The same thing that I talk, I'm talking about for my life is applicable to all of us. Yes, ma'am. His ascension released, released everything that heaven has for man. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. His divine power has given his, to his us. His ascension released it to us. So his divine uh, wait, wait, power wait. has given to absolutely. us all that pertains Absol unto life. Absolutely. And God. So is he, someone is even doing himself a disservice by not maximizing the riches of this release yes, all sir. that god mm -hmm. gave us you know i'll still come back to something mm -hmm. that mommy said but let's take it share your thoughts man okay thank you very much the um, importance of this ascension, ascension to us hallelujah amen when you look at what jesus said in uh, john chapter 14 verse 2 which we read he said in my father's house there are many mansions mm. And I've gone to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. Yes, ma'am. So, and Jesus Christ is the life, the way, the truth. Mm. He promised us that he will was, he was prepare a place for all of us individually. Hmm. One by one, we have a place we are going to. So, he has ascended to make sure that that place is ready for us. And there, he said... He will be with us. Awesome. Because where he is, is there, there we will also, be. Also. also be. 
So, so it's, it's, it's very important that, Jesus, because we have even said some of them when we said the Holy Spirit will now come to us to be able to teach us, guide us, help us in every other thing we are doing here in, here in the world and prepare us for the life hereafter. And then when we uh, also remember that Jesus is our advocate, Jesus the righteous, who is the propitiation for our sins. So he's standing there interceding for us, awesome. making sure that we meet that standard he wants us to, to be. So his ascension is really um, very important to of us. Of great benefit to very, us. Very, very important to us. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. It's been so exciting and it's been, I've been blessed richly. Let's even consider this aspect of I go to prepare a place for you. Just want to draw something from there. Mommy talked about you solve one problem, you get into another. Why? Because here is not your home. You know, some of us live our life as if everything begins and ends okay. here. We are like pilgrims. We are going somewhere. You are not yet home. I remember the story of an American missionary with a wife who had been on the mission field for many years. And then this, they decided to take a while to go back home. I read it up many years ago. And they happened to be on their way back to, the, uh, to America. They happened to be in the same ship with a former U.S. president then who had gone on a holiday to Europe and was also returning home. So... On their way home, before they got to their final harbor, they saw lots of people with flowers shouting who came to welcome them. So the man mistakenly thought these guys were here for them because they've been out there in the mission field laboring. And he looked at the wife and said, wow, look at the crowd. So they were taken aback, kind of surprised that when they now got back and they were stepping out, they saw that the president of the, of the U.S., who just went on a holiday, came back, or was coming back, and then everybody was welcoming him. And the man felt like, look at, we've been out there in the field, laboring for the kingdom. We've been out there sweating it out. Mm -hmm. And nobody took notice nobody of what. And this man has just gone on a hunting spree in Europe, holiday, coming back, and this crowd is there. He was disturbed. For many years after, after many days after that, he was disturbed. According to the story, the wife felt, why are you disturbed? Settle this case. And say, you need to settle this case. Go back to God in mm -hmm. prayer. And then after some hours of prayer or days of prayer, I can't remember exactly, he came out and with this unusual glow of excitement written all over him. And the wife said, what is it? He said, God just assured him. And the word was simple. I think his name is Morrison. Mm -hmm. Somebody Morrison, I can't remember exactly. He said, you are not yet home. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are not yet mm -hmm. home. You know, some of us, you are waiting for the laurels. Mm -hmm. You are thinking, what is happening here? There is a prize. There is a crown of glory that awaits you. But that crown of glory will only come when you are home. Come. And Jesus ascended that he might prepare a palatial home for you. Mommy said, and it's exciting to note, that you have a room. Have a and home. I have a room. A home. I have a home there. Mansion. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Mansion. Streets of gold. Mm. We are saying this thing, not just to whet your appetite, but to excite you so that you know that Jesus has not gone up in vain. Mm. Jesus has ascended to prepare a place for you. And until you get to that home, nothing here will satisfy you. St. Augustine of Hippo said, Our hearts are created for God to inhabit, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in God. Conclusion. Only the one who descended from heaven can ascend into heaven. The ascension of Jesus Christ forever remains one of the mysterious supernatural events that signifies him as the Lord of Lords and the King of kings the one who did the law of physics the lord of lord and the kings of kings food for thought only he who descended to defeat death is able to ascend to reign forever we'll take our memory verse together john chapter 3 verse 13. no, no one, one has ascended, has ascended to, to heaven, heaven but he who came, came down from, from heaven, heaven that, that is the son, son of, of man who is, is in, in heaven, heaven. That is the memory verse. No one. I'd like us to take it again, please. The memory verse. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. Child of God, we trust that you make peace with Jesus. 
so that the benefit thereof of his ascension will be yours. You can appropriate it to your life. Now while you're on this side of eternity and ultimately when you meet him in your home in heaven. I want to thank God for today. It's been another exciting time learning at the feet of Jesus. And we trust God that what God has done, the truth, the insight, the light that his word has brought to your way will stay with you for the remaining course of your journey on this side of eternity. We want to thank our resource persons whom God has mightily used to share his word and bring it to our spirits. Mrs. Ukejofo, it's a joy. And may God continue to uphold you. May the boundary lines continually fall onto you in pleasant places Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Ma. I want to say that in Christ we have hope. Amen. And whatever God has promised to do for us, he will do it. Amen. He's coming again and he's coming to take his sense with him. My prayer is that all of us who believe in him will ascend with him. Amen. And take up our mansions in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, the angels came and they say, this same Jesus this will in like manner will come. come. Mm -hmm. Emphatic, mm -hmm. in like manner come. You know, some people will teach you, ah, mm -hmm. in like manner he's coming and he's coming very soon. Ma, your last thoughts before we thank God for... My last mm -hmm. thought is that we should realize that the ascension is critical. Awesome. Mm -hmm. It's a critical part of the journey of the Messiah to bringing us complete salvation and rest. Thank you very much, Ma. We also want to thank God for you. You're always on this platform, and we want to pray that God will continually uphold you. Your service in the kingdom will not be in vain. You will get mm. your crown on that final day Thank you in much. heaven, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Child of God, we will see you again, same time next week. But before then, if you want to get across to us and reach out to us, or perhaps testify of how this program has been a blessing to you. Or there are areas you want us to also improve. We are open to learning. Excellence has got no finishing line. That was the word of a sage. We want, to reach out. we want you to reach out and get across to us. We will be, we'll be most excited to receive your views. Until then, we will see you again mm -hmm. next week. God bless you. Mm -hmm.